say genuine delicious and constructive critics are you and they are dear and near in science at all the social activist sangut halat teacher professor s suresh nagrate sheer delight my under 11 video on anvil of publication on youtube today 18th november 2020 wednesday topic for today is beauty is trendy also known as artificial beauty natural beauty is sublime and exists in everything in nature like mountains streams rivers forests flowers fruits nuts birds animals and other sentient species on earth the supreme also known as god also created a species called humans also known as earthlings the only ugly creation so humans are forced to resort to application of cosmetics and cosmetic treatments and presume that they appear to be beautiful under this mask to peel off this mask then true ugliness surfaces one's character may be good or virtuous which will enhance the natural beauty harsh fact is people are vicious and no matter whatever effort they put in to appear beautiful is a sheer waste and they only look ugly beauty for ancient thinkers existed both in form it is the material world as it is and as embodied in the spirit which is the world of mental formations during bronze age there existed a woman known as helen of troy who was known as the most beautiful according to which standard it is presumably the most beautiful within the greek world the existence is dated about 1250 one source specifically shows around 18, 1188 bc this being the date of an astronomical occurrence during the trojan war pythagoras conceived of beauty as useful for our moral education of the soul the pythagoreans conceived of the presence of beauty in universal terms which is as existing in a cosmological state they observe beauty in the heavens pythagoras wrote of how people experience pleasure when aware of a certain type of formal situation present in reality perceived by sight or through the ear pythagoras discovered the underlying mathematical ratios in the harmonic scales in music the classical concept of beauty is one which exhibits perfect proportion in this context context the concept belonged often within the discipline of mathematics mathematics an idea of spiritual beauty emerged during the classical period beauty was something embodying divine goodness while demonstration of behavior which may be classified as beautiful from an inner state of morality which is aligned to the good platonic thought synthesizes beauty with the divine aristotle defines beauty in metaphysics as having order symmetry and definiteness which the mathematical sciences exhibit in a spe- special degree during the italian renaissance vasari aligned himself to the classical notion of thought of beauty as defined as arising from proportion and order beauty is ascription of a property or characteristic to a person object animal place or idea that provides a perceptual experience of pleasure or satisfaction beauty is studied as part of aesthetics culture social psychology and uh, sociology experience of beauty often involves an interpretation of some entity as being in balance and harmony with nature which may lead to feelings of attraction and emotional well-being because this can be a subjective experience it is often said beauty is in the eye of the beholder often given the observation that the empirical observations of things that are considered beautiful often align among groups in consensus beauty has been stated to have levels of subjectivity and partial subjectivity which are not fully subjective in the aesthetic judgment ugliness is the opposite of beauty the word beauty is often used as a countable noun to describe a beautiful woman an example an excellent example of something or a pleasing feature of something 
Plato considered beauty to be the idea, form, above all other ideas. Aristotle saw a relationship between the beautiful to Cologne and virtue, arguing that virtue aims at the beautiful. Classical philosophy and sculptures of men and women produced according to the Greek philosophers, tenets of ideal human beauty, which had discovered in Renaissance Europe, leading to a re-adoption of what becomes became known as a classical idea. In terms of female human beauty, a woman whose appearance conforms to these tenets, tenets is still called a classical beauty or said to possess a classical beauty, while the foundations laid by Greek and Roman artists also uh, supply standard of male beauty and female beauty in Western civilization. During the Gothic era, the classical aesthetic canon of beauty was rejected as sinful. Later, Renaissance and humanist thinkers rejected this view and considered beauty to be the product of rational order and harmonious proportion. Renaissance artists and architects such as Giorgio Vasari in his Lives of Artists criticized the Gothic period as irrational and barbarian. This point of view of Gothic art lasted until Romanticism in the 19th century. In the Middle Ages, Catholic philosophers like Thomas Aquinas included beauty among the transcendental attributes of being. In his Summa Theologica, Aquinas described the three conditions of beauty as integritas, boldness, constant, constant, harmony and proportion, and caritas, the radiance and clarity that makes the form of the thing apparent to the mind. In the Gothic architecture of the high and late Middle Ages, light was considered as the mo most beautiful revelation of God, which was heralded in design, Illuminati. The examples of the stained glass of Gothic style cathedrals, including Notre Dame, the Paris, and Chartres cathedral. The age of reason saw a rise in, in, in an interest in beauty as a philosophical subject. Immanuel Kant, philosopher, believed that there could be no universal criterion for the beautiful, and that the experience of beauty is subjective. Or that an object is judged to be beautiful when it seems to display purposiveness. That is, when the form is perceived to have the character of being designed according to some principle and fitted for, for a purpose. He distinguished free beauty from merely dependent beauty, explaining that the first three supposes no concept of what the object ought to be. The second thus presupposes such a concept and the perfection of the object in accordance with it. By this definition, free beauty, beauty is found in seashells and wordless music. Dependent beauty in buildings the human body. The romantic poets too became highly concerned with the nature of beauty. With John Keats agree, arguing in all, on a Grecian uh, that beauty is true, true beauty that is all. Ye know on earth and all ye need to know. In the Romantic period, Edmund Burke postulated the difference between beauty in its classical meaning and the sublime. The concept of the sublime as explicated by Burke and Kant suggested viewing Gothic art and architecture, though not in accordance with the classical standard of beauty as sublime. The 20th century saw an increasing rejection of beauty by artists and philosophers like, like culminating in postmodernism anti aesthetics. That is, despite beauty being a central concern of one of postmodernism's main influences, Frederick. Nietzsche, who argued that the will to power was the will to beauty. In the aftermath of postmodernism, rejection of beauty, thinkers have returned to beauty as an important value. American analytic philosopher Guy Sercello proposed his new theory of beauty as an effort to reaffirm the status of beauty as an important philosophical concept. He rejected the subject, subject, subjectivism of Kant and sought to identify the properties inherent in an object that make it beautiful. He called qualities such as vividness, boldness, and sub subtlety, properties of qualitative degree, P, PQDs, and stated that a PQD makes an object beautiful if it is not, and does not create the appearance of a property of deficiency, lack, or defect. And if a PQD is strongly present in the object. Elaine Scarry argues that beauty is related to justice. Beauty is also studied by 
philosophies and neuroscientists in the field of experiment, experimental aesthetics and neuro aesthetics respectively neuroaesthetics psychological theory see beauty as a form of pleasure correlational findings suppose the view that more beautiful objects are more pleasing some studies suggest that suggest that experience beauty is associated with activity in the medial orbito frontal cortex cortex this approach to localizing the processing of beauty in one brain region as we say pleasism within the field chinese philosophy has traditionally not made a separate discipline of the philosophy of beauty confucius identified beauty with the goodness and considered a virtuous personality to be the greatest of beauties in his philosophy the neighborhood with the rain man in it is a beautiful neighborhood confucius school and zeng shen zeng shen express a similar idea few men would see the beauty in someone whom they dislike mencius this considered complete truthfulness to be beauty zuzi said when one has strenuously implemented goodness until it is filled to completion and has accumulated truth then the beauty will reside within it and will not depend on external the word beauty is often used as a countable noun to describe a beautiful woman the characterization of a person as beautiful whether on an individual basis or by community consensus is often based on some combination of inner beauty which includes psychological factors such as personality intelligence grace politeness charisma integrity congruence and elegance outer beauty that is physical attractiveness which includes physical attributes which are valued on an aesthetic basis standards of beauty are changed over time based on changing cultural values historically painting show a wide range of different standards for beauty however humans were relatively young and with a smooth skin well proportioned bodies and regular features have traditionally been considered the most beautiful throughout history a strong indicator of physical beauty is average nose when images of human faces are averaged together to form a composite image they become progressively closer to the ideal image and are perceived as more attractive this was first noticed in 1883 when francis galton overlaid photographic composite images of the faces of vegetarians and criminals to see if there is a, there was a typical facial appearance for it when doing this he noticed that the composite images were more attractive compared to any of the individual images researchers have replicated the results and are more controlled conditions and found that computer generated mathematical average of a series of faces is rated more favorably than individual faces it is argued that it is evolutionary evolutionary advantages that sexual creatures are attracted to male who possess predominantly common or average features because it suggests the absence of genetic or acquired defects there is also evidence that the preference for beautiful faces emerges early in infancy and it is probably innate and that the rules by which attractiveness is established are similar across different genders and cultures a feature of beautiful women that has been explored by researchers is a waist hip ratio of approximately 0.7 psychologists have shown that women with uh, hourglass figures are more fertile than uh, other women due to higher levels of certain female hormones a fact that may be that may subconsciously condition males choosing mates however other commentators have suggested that this difference may not be universal for instance some in some non western cultures in which women have to do work such as finding food men tend to have preferences for higher waist hip ratios beauty standards are rooted in cultural norms crafted by societies and media over centuries probably it is argued that the predominance of white women featured in movies and advertising leads to eurocentric concept of beauty breeding cultures that assign such inferiority to women of color the so- societies and cultures across the globe struggle to diminish the long standing internalized racism racism the black is beautiful cultural movement sought to dispel this notion in the 1960s exposure to the teen ideal in mass media such as fashion magazines directly correlates with the body dissatisfaction low self esteem the development of eating disorders bilumia among female viewers further the widening gap between individual body sizes and societal ideals continues to breed anxiety among young girls as they grow highlighting the dangerous nature of beauty standards in society the concept of beauty in men is known as 
Bisonia, Bisona in Japan. Bisona refers to males with distinctly feminine features, physical characteristics establishing the standard of beauty in Japan and typically exhibited in the pop culture idol. The multi billion dollar industry of Japanese aesthetic salons exists for this reason. However, different nations have varying male beauty ideals. Eurocentric standards for men include tallness, leanness, and muscularity. muscularity. Thus, these features are uh, idolized through American media, such as in Hollywood films and magazine covers. The prevailing Eurocentric concept of beauty has varying effects on different cultures. Primarily, adherence to this standard among African American women had bred a lack of positive reification of African beauty, and philosopher Cornel West elaborates that much of black self-hatred and self-contempt has to do with the refusal of many black Americans to love their own black bodies, especially the black noses, hips, lips, and colors. These insecurities can be traced back to global idealization of women with light skin, green or blue eyes, and long, straight or wavy hair in magazines and media that starkly contrast with the natural features of African women who are dark in complexion. In East Asian cultures, cultures familial, familial pressures and cultural norms shape beauty ideals. Professor and scholar Stephanie Wong's experimental study concluded that expecting that the men in, men in Asian culture did not like women who like fragile impacted the lifestyle, eating, and appearance choices made by Asian as American women. In addition to the male gaze, media portrayals of Asian women as fetide and portrayal of beautiful women in American media as fair complexion and slim figure induce anxiety and depressive symptoms among Asian American women who do not fit either of these beauty, either of these beauty ideals. Further, the high status associated with the fairer skin can be attributed to Asian societal history. Upper class people hired workers to perform outdoor manual labor, cultivating a visual divide over time between lighter complexion, wealthier families, and sun tan darker laborers. This, along with the Eurocentric beauty ideals, embedded in Asian culture has made skin lightening cream Rhinoplasty and blepharoplasty, an eyelid surgery meant to give Asians a more European double eyelid appearance, commonplace among Asian women, eliminating the insecurity that results from cultural beauty standards. Much criticism has been directed as models of beauty, which depend solely upon Western ideas of beauty, as seen, for example, in the Barbie model franchise. Criticisms of Barbie are often centered on concerns that children consider. Barbie, a role model of beauty, and will attempt to emulate her. One of the most common criticisms of Barbie is that she promotes an unrealistic idea of body image for a young woman, leading to a risk that girls who attempt to emulate her will become anorexic. These criticisms have led to a constructive dialogue to enhance the presence of non exclusive models of Western ideals in body, shape, type, and beauty. Complaints also have yeah, Point to a lack of diversity in such franchises such as, as the Barbie model of beauty in Western culture. Natural responded makers of Barbie doll responded to these criticisms. Starting in 1980, it produced Hispanic dolls and later came models from across the globe. Researchers have found that good looking students get higher grades from the teachers than students with an ordinary appearance. Some studies using mock criminal trials have shown that physically attracted defendants are less likely to be convicted, and if convicted, are more likely to receive lighter sentences than less attractive ones. Although the opposite effect was observed in the alleged crime, the swindling, perhaps because jurors perceived the defendant's attractiveness facilitating the crime. Studies among teens and young adults, such as those of psychiatrists and self help author Ivari Etro, show that skin conditions have a profound effect on societal social behavior and opportunity. How much money a person earns may also be influenced by physical beauty. One study found that people low in physical attractiveness earn 5 to 10 percent less than ordinary looking people, who in turn earn 3 to 8 percent less than those who are considered good looking. The market for loans, the least attractive people are less likely to get approvals, although they are less likely to defer. In the marriage market, women's looks are at the premium, but men's looks do not matter much. Conversely, being very unattractive increases the individual's propensity for any criminal activity for a number of crimes, ranging from burglary to theft to selling illicit drugs. Discrimination against others based on their appearance is known as lookism. 
males go for looks and females go for money anything that looks beautiful attractive is dangerous in nature classic examples are cleopatra poisonous reptiles class etc beauty is a property of certain things some something is beautiful it is nice to look at it hear it feel it taste it smell it or think about it it's also the name of a feeling that is hard to describe the nature of this feeling there is from person to person and culture to culture it is not known it's only humans can feel it there are a lot many ideas about what beauty is some people say that beauty is a similarity between a real object and an object of art for example a beautiful picture might be might be one that looks very life like the similarity between any object and what one thing should not look like for example a beautiful tree might be one the straight brown trunk trunk and lots of green leaves or beautiful clouds might be those that are white and fluffy like wood the way an object makes us feel happy sad or angry or something else emotional for example the beautiful piece of music might be the one which makes people feel very happy or very sad the quality of an object for example a beautiful story might be very well written in regards to writing a piece may be beautiful through use of intricacies and depth which gives a reader a mental image of a certain feeling or feelings of emotion poetry is one example of writing that can be considered beautiful in the way it paints a picture of or uh, brings about an emotional response there are many other theories some things that people say are beautiful are not explained by any of these ideas for the greeks beauty was a virtue a kind of excellence persons that are assumed to be what we now have to call lamely enviously whole person if it did occur to the greeks to distinguish between a person's inside and outside they still expected that inner beauty would be matched by beauty of the outer part the well born young Ethiopian who gathered around Socrates found it quite paradoxical that the hero was so intelligent so base so honorable so seductive and so ugly one of Socrates main pedagogical acts was to be ugly and teach those women and no doubt splendid looking disciples of his house full of parallaxes like the early world they may have resisted Socrates lesson we do not several thousand years later we, we are more that wary of the enchantments of beauty we not only split split off with the greatest facility the inside character intellect from the outside looks but we are actually surprised when someone who is beautiful is also intelligent talented good it was simply the principal influence of christianity that deprived beauty of a central place if it had to be a classical ideal which it had in classical ideals of human excellence by limiting excellence virtues in latin is a moral virtue only christianity said beauty addressed as an alienated arbitrary superficial enchantment and beauty has continued to lose prestige for close to two centuries has become a convention to attribute beauty to only one of the two sexes the sex which however is always second associating beauty with women and put beauty even further on the defensive moral the beautiful woman we say in english but a handsome man handsome is a masculine equivalent of and refusal of a compliment which has accumulated certain demeaning overtones by being reserved for women only one can call that one can call a man beautiful in french and in italian suggest that catholic countries and like those french countries shaped by the protestant version of christianity still remain some vestiges of the pagan admiration of beauty the difference if one exists is of degree only in every modern country that is christian or post christian women are the beautiful sex to the determinant of the notion of beauty as well as of women so we call beautiful is thought to mean something essential to women's character and concern in contrast to men whose essence is be strong or effective or competent it does not take someone in the throes of advanced feminist awareness to perceive that the way women are taught to be involved the beauty encourages narcissism reinforces dependence and immaturity everybody women and men knows that 
for it is everybody a whole society that has identified being feminine with caring about how one looks in contrast to being masculine masculine which is identified with caring about what one is and does not does and only secondarily if at all about how one looks given these stereotypes it is no wonder that beauty enjoys at best a rather mixed reputation it is not of course the desire to be beautiful that is wrong but the obligation to be or uh, to try what is accepted by most women as a flattering idealization of the sex is a way of making women feel inferior to what they actually are or normally grow to be so the ideal of beauty is administered as a form of self oppression women are taught to see their bodies in parts and to evaluate each part separately breast hip feet hips waist line neck height nose mouth complexion hair and so on and each in turn are submitted to an anxious fretful often despairing scrutiny even if some pass matter some will always be found wanting nothing less than perfection will do in men good looks as a whole is a whole something taken at a taken it at a glance it does not need to be confirmed by giving measurements of different regions of the body nobody encourages a man to dissect his appearance feature by feature as for perfection that is considered to be a almost unmanly indeed in the ideally good looking man a small imperfection or blemish is considered possibly desirable according to one movie critic a woman woman who is declared robert redford fan it is having that cluster of skin colored moles on one cheek that says robert redford be being from being nearly a pretty face not only robert redford eh? george clooney most of the females in the world say that he is uh, very attractive most desired man in the world they say i don't know what why think of the depreciation of women as well as of beauty that is implied in the judgment the privileges of beauty are immense said talk to to be sure beauty is a form of power power and deservedly so what is lamentable is that it is only a form of power that most women are encouraged to see this power is always conceived in relation to men it is not the power to do but the power to attract it attract it is a power that negates itself for this power is not one that can be chosen freely at least not by women or renounced without social censure the queen for a woman can never be just a pleasure it is also a duty it is her work if a man does real work and even if she has clambered up to be a leading position in politics law medicine business or whatever she is always under pressure to confess that she still still works at being attractive but in so far as she is keeping up as one of the fair sex she brings under suspicion her very capacity to be objective professional authority to and that damned if they do women are and damned if they don't one would hardly ask for more important evidence of the dangers of dangers of concern considering persons are split between what is inside and what is outside than that interminable half comic half tragic tale the oppression of women how easy it is to start off by defining women as caretakers of the surfaces and then to disparage them to find them or find them adorable for being superficial it's a crude trap and it has worked for too long but to get out of the trap requires that women get some critical distance from that excellence and privilege which is beauty enough distance to see how much beauty itself has been abridged in order to prop up the mythology of the feminine that should be a way of saving beauty from women for the standards of beauty get changing with the times our current beauty standards for women include as some of healthy skinny large breast but thigh gap skin tradition as unfortunately as it may be is a poster woman of ideal beauty standards for the modern woman women are expected to be skinny but not too skinny with large breasts and a big butt all while maintaining a flat stomach women increasingly are seeking plastic surgery fixes to achieve this look for most americans grooming is an activity in which they are willing to invest substantial chunks of their time and money we not only spend time enhancing our appearance we spend large sums of money on it too. in 2008 the average american household spent 718 us dollars on women's and girls clothing for 27 dollars us dollars on men's and boys clothing 655 us dollars on infants clothing footwear and other apparel products and services and 616 us dollars on personal care products and services 
such spending total roughly 400 billion us dollars and accounted for nearly 5% of all consumer spending that year no doubt some of the spending is necessary just to avoid giving all factory or visual appens to family members friends and other others whom we meet but that minimal amount is far less than we actually spend on these items our pre occupation with the looks has fostered the growth of industries devoted to indulging this fascination markets for labor of a variety of types whereas even all labor market might generate premium pay for good looks and pay penalties for bad looks the economic approach trade beauty as scarce and tradable we trade beauty for additional income that enables us to raise our living standard satisfy our desires for more things and for non monetary characteristics of work and interpersonal relations such as pleasant colleagues an enjoyable workplace and so on and that also make us better off my advice to women of all ages is to work with what you have if you feel you need a change try a new holistic change your hairstyle eat healthier get a glow from exercise and look after your skin properly if you want to look more attractive simply smile at people your smile is your biggest beauty secret trust me many women look in the mirror and see flaws only this is because the media has portrayed beauty to have a specific meaning when in fact i believe beauty is within uh, within us all despite this fact many women wear makeup cosmetic to hide what they assume to be not considerable to the public eye in order to keep up the media's portrayal of beauty women can use a number of cosmetics to help enhance their actions which way part of a look minor adjustments such as makeup and tanning to the way we dress major more major alterations could be dental work or even plastic surgery so what drives us to uh, want to improve ourselves consistently the media falsely advises uh, to us exactly what beauty should be this in turn makes women feel insecure like they have to live up to some sort of expectation you can choose to wear any makeup you like or have any type of surgery you desire however you should bear in mind that you should be concentrating on the good things about yourself rather than try and improve the flaws every single person has flaws as no one on this planet is perfect perfectionism perfection perfectionism is practically is a practical impossibility you should embrace what you have instead of trying to keep up with the facade of being like everyone you see in the magazine artificial beauty over time can cause health problems ranging from minor complications to more severe problems for example if you choose to yeah, use hair dye hair dye to constantly change the color of your hair then this can over time ruin the glow and growth of your hair this will consequently make your hair very dry and in some cases hair has been known to fall out due to constant bleaching another example is if you you regularly if you regularly attend a tanning salon to salon to have your tan topped up using a sunbed sunbeds may seem harmless when in fact they could lead you to being exposed to harmful rays this may result in complications such as skin cancer radiation beauty may be in the eye of the beholder as i said before but that does not mean that women are required to present themselves in the way that is desired by other people artificial beauty is a myth business corporations are playing mind games those cosmetic surgical treatments can enhance one's beauty one can never improve the outer beauty by wasting money on all these unwanted products and surgeries it may only lead to so many adverse effects on health both men and women are so obsessed with their looks the internationally popular singer michael jackson hated his skin color and he used steroids and ultimately lost his precious life as a result of overdosage of these uh, steroids in all beauty pageants the ones that were declared winners are dusty with a hidden motives to market fairness cream the fact is no cream or cosmetic treatment will make one become fat become fat all product advertisements for such cosmetics are absolute white lies nothing but lies skin color is because of pigmentation and even if you peel off the outer skin within a short period of time you'll get back the natural skin color only once it starts growing back there is a myth that only fair skin people are beautiful it is only the features that count focus on enhancement of inner beauty which is eternal by doing good deeds and be as virtuous as possible outer beauty is artificial and will not last for long people that are beautiful attractive have only ruined empires knowledge wisdom and beauty are like opposite magnetic poles same is true for knowledge and physical wealth debates discussion on open ended topics like this can go on forever anyhow let me pull the plug here we'll meet again real soon with another interesting topic some of the
state must use express or solely mind based on limited knowledge gained over six decades of personal experience. Always watch these videos with closed caption. Subtitles are absolute 100% comprehension as per, as per my sincere recommendation. Zillion times so far, I know I rushed out to complete the presentation within 20 minutes max, which is a time limit that I have set myself to retain the viewer's attention. But I know pretty well that I am uh, not able to maintain that since I make honest attempts to cover the selected topic more elaborately, including so many intricate fine details covering a wide variety of sources, in particular Wikipedia quite extensively, besides articles and books published recently. Besides, of course, I sprinkle my own salt and pepper and season it with my personal experiences so far in my life and also intuition. Stay at home as much as possible to maintain social distancing attributed to pandemic novel COVID-19 and prolong your lifespan. Lead a healthy life. God alone can put a stop to natural and natural events like bio war and cyber war events like pandemics, which may lead to apocalypse and extinction of all sentient species on earth for no fault of theirs. Rest in peace and harmony.